gave up gluten, but now you want it back. Well, today I'm revealing the gluten secret. You don't have to be gluten-free. We got a five-step plan that is going to help you add gluten back safely. What you can eat now to strengthen your gut so you can enjoy gluten again. Plus, how to stop a food binge when you feel the urge. Coming up next on Oz. Thank you all very much. All right, you say it's the number one cause of your gas, your bloating, and your stomach pain. I'm talking about gluten. But even if not eating it makes you feel better, you miss it, and you want it back. Well, today I'm revealing the gluten secret. I want you to meet the doctor who says you don't need to be gluten-free forever. Dr. Susan Blum used to be gluten-free, but found a way to eat it without side effects. She's helped her patients go back to gluten, and now she says she can help you as well. Let's first cover gluten as a general issue. Why is this just a big problem for so many folks in your practice? Well, gluten is a protein that's mostly found in wheat. Gluten can cause the common symptoms that we're all familiar with, gas and bloating, irritable bowel type syndrome symptoms. However, gluten can also cause outside the gut symptoms like rashes, brain fog, other inflammation. So it's really important to test yourself and if gluten is a problem, when you remove it, you will have resolution of those symptoms. So we've had so many, so many viewers tell us that yes. their lives have changed dramatically by going gluten free. Yes. But you're making the provocative argument that once we fix those problems, we might be actually go back and eat gluten again. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Fixing the gut is the way in. So you remove gluten for a period of time while you work on healing your gut, and then you can go back and reintroduce the gluten once you have your digestive power back again. And can everybody do this? Not everybody. For the 1% of the population that has celiac disease or people with autoimmune disease, they cannot reintroduce gluten. However, for the people with gluten sensitivity, which is who we're talking about today, much bigger population. which is a much bigger population, for those people, if they do it the right way, I'm not saying you can just go start eating gluten again, but I'm saying if you do it the right way, healing your gut like we're going to talk about today, then you can circle back and reintroduce gluten again in moderation. Okay, that's a very important point. Let's get to it. We've got a five-step plan uh, that's going to help you add gluten back safely into your safely. life. Safely. That's so, right. For folks who aren't sensitive to gluten, is there still benefits of paying attention? Absolutely. This Healing Your Gut program is great for anybody with any kind of digestive symptoms, as well as people with systemic inflammation like arthritis. Right. It's very good. Step number one is to cleanse your gut. You can use something called oregano. You've heard of oregano as a spice, but this is a more comprehensive approach. We do it for two weeks. We're going to do it for two weeks. Now, this is the first step because you have to treat the overgrowth of bacteria in your digestive tract, and that's what's causing the foundational issue with your digestive problems. We use oregano, I love oregano. You can use it in food, so you can use the herb, you can cook with it, which is a great idea. You can make oregano tea. However, I really recommend for ease of use, it's really great to use a supplement. It's also a little bit more effective, um, or a lot more effective, I would say. So I definitely recommend oregano, 200 milligrams three times a day. Minimum of two weeks. If your symptoms are very mild, I think two weeks will do. If you have moderate or severe symptoms, you might need to do that longer, up to a month. Yeah. You know, whenever our kids get sick, my wife puts oregano on them. They taste like pizzas. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> I know sick. And actually, you can use oregano oils. You can get oregano oil in a dropper, and you can, or even take the capsules when you feel like you're getting sick. It's a nice little tip. It does. Uh, right. it's, a, it's an herbal antibacterial. It helps treat over, uh, bacteria. Yes. Next step is apple cider vinegar, widely used by a lot of folks. But this, you say, is actually very important if you've got a gluten issue. Yeah, apple cider vinegar stimulates your digestion. This is really important, especially even while you're gluten-free, because it will help prime you to be ready when it's time to eat the gluten again. It's actually very easy to do. You can see we have a little shot glass, right? And so you can drink it all by itself. You say we should also add it to water? Well, you know, some people might be a little strong tasting. You can do it either way. You can do it, you can just shoot it down or you can uh, take it in a glass of water. Not too uh, bad, right? Yeah, but I'd rather just shoot it down. Get it out of the way. Yeah, get it this out of the way. No, I agree with that. <laughs> Spread but, it out. But keep in mind, if you don't want to do it that way, it's very easy to take a digestive enzyme. Yeah. We've been speaking about bacteria in the gut, but we actually want to add back some of the important ones. So probiotics are an important part probiotics of the Probiotics are really important. The nice thing is, I know you love food as medicine, as do I, and so we can use food. Fermented foods like pickles, sauerkraut, we see all these pickled foods. They're very, you know, this around the world, this is how cultures keep their guts healthy. They eat all these foods. We love yogurt as well. If you're dairy sensitive, you might go with coconut yogurt or, you know, instead of the classic, you know, Greek yogurt. But 
Either way, two servings a day of getting some cultured food into your diet is great during the treatment part of the program, but also I think that's insurance going forward. I think it keeps your gut healthy, it keeps the floor healthy. It's good to just bring into your diet every day. And find something you like. Pickles work, by the way. You know, kimchi, miso. Find something that, right. that gets you. Right. Uh, there's enough choices here to find something that works. Exactly. Then we have to start repairing the gut lining. And yes. This is actually a very interesting concept. Uh, you want to do this with using something called L-glutamine, which we haven't talked about very much as a powder. And you know, you're so passionate about it, Dr. Blum, that you actually sell this on your website. But there are many places you can get this powder. It's on online uh, websites. It's uh, in health food stores. It's all over the place now. Explain to everyone what it is and why you adore. It so much. I love L-glutamine. It is a very powerful amino acid that heals the cells that line your intestinal tract. Good for your immune system, gets you ready to be able to eat gluten, gluten again. It has absolutely no taste. It, you can throw it in a smoothie like we did here. You can mix it in a beverage of your choice. It's one of the easiest things to take and it's one of the most important. It's the last step in the Heal Your Gut program, repairing that lining, very important. The let's, best let's part is, it, it really doesn't taste like anything, which is fantastic, because you can sneak it in without anyone knowing it. Yeah, nobody will know. Just don't get it on your nose. You can give it to your kids. it with other things. <laughs> All right. and, now, you can, and you can slip that into your smoothie for your kids. You know, they don't even know it's there. Now, yeah. the audience has been watching this table the entire segment, okay. wondering what is this about. So They're trying gluten. to see whether we're going to tell them they can have gluten again. <laughs> right. Here, this is what you can have. How do you do it? What, you know, what kinds of products make the most sense when you begin to slowly, appropriately introduce gluten back into your life? Right. Well, first of all, you need to be on a gluten-free diet for six months before you even begin to contemplate reintroducing gluten again. During that time, you need to heal your gut, which is a three-month process. Depending on you know, how severe your symptoms are, you'll need perhaps even longer than three months. Some of my patients have needed up to a year of glutamine, digestive support, probiotics, before their gut was ready to be able to handle the gluten again. So that's the first piece. The second piece is when it comes time to test yourself to see whether or not you can tolerate it, start with a grain such as spelt or farro or rye because those have less gluten than wheat does. So you start with the grains that have less gluten first and if you tolerate those okay, then you can move on to whole wheat, you know, like a whole wheat or a whole grain. Stay away from the white stuff, you know, the processed stuff isn't good for us. And if that goes okay, then you can start introducing it into your diet in moderation. I'm not giving permission to people to start eating gluten three times a day, every day again. It will just damage the gut and get you right back to where you started, right? So half a cup of pasta, one piece of bread, wait three or four days to see whether or not you have a reaction. And if you do, then pull it back out again and continue and go back to the gut healing process and make sure your gut is really healed before you start eating it again. For more details on Dr. Blum's plan and to read an excerpt for a wonderful book, The Immune System Recovery Plan, log on to DrOz.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> Are the healthy foods you're buying doing harm to your thyroid? Everyday foods we think are good for us may be causing fatigue, hair loss, and weight gain. Learn the best ways to eat these foods and keep your thyroid hormones in check. Coming up. Secrets to shrink your belly. Reveal. You can have one serving of these foods. Whether you have a pooch, muffin, bloated belly, or all three, Dr. Raj shows you what to eat for a tighter tummy. And I'm going to give you one very specific tip. Plus, can't sleep through the night? The number one reason you're getting up and what to do about it. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Today, there's surprising health foods that can actually harm your thyroid. Now, I wanted to know if the health foods that can throw your thyroid hormones into a tizzy are actually on your grocery list. So I asked the entire audience to bring in theirs. Let me see them. Yeah, they all have them. They all have them. Let me start off with, how about you guys? What are, you, what are your names? Joanna. Joanna? Meredith. Okay, can I see your list? Sure can. All right, here we go. We got here. So I actually took a little a picture of your list, and they're up uh, for the audience at home to see as well. So Joanna knows what a show off you are. Kale, <laughs> broccoli, banana, all the things I talk about. Quinoa. I watch your show, so. Well, thank you. It's even spelled right. On the other hand, Meredith here. Why do you need two kinds of, of chips? You have potato chips and tortilla chips. Because who doesn't love chips? <laughs> and I'm, I'm not as good as Joanna. No. There's actually some healthy foods, foods I adore, that 
Unfortunately, it can hurt our thyroid. So the first category are the cruciferous veggies. So I notice you have got kale and broccoli on Joanna's. And there's actually broccoli, there's broccoli as well, but let me show you why cruciferous vegetables are a concern. Come on up here. Great. I, I'm gonna give you a moment to put your purple gloves on here. <laughs> okay. Go ahead, Meredith, you can take those. And Joanna, grab those are for you. Uh, this is what the thyroid gland looks like. And the thyroid gland is designed in a very unique way. It's up on your throat. Uh, and it sits there perfectly in position to take away uh, things like iodine from the bloodstream and make thyroid hormone. When you take too much of these types of greens that I've been speaking about, it causes your thyroid gland to enlarge. It blocks the hormones from getting out of the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland begins to bulge with these hormones, but it can't get rid of them. So that causes symptoms of fatigue and it leads to hair loss and, and weight gain in some folks as well. Uh, you know, it happens and people can't even figure out why. So go ahead and feel the thyroid, you can see it there. This is is this real? <laughs> it's a real thyroid, yeah. Don't that, fight over it. That was it. exactly my question. It's a real thyroid. Wow. Fits up on your neck right and beneath And I'm a nurse, your... so I've been... Oh, you are? Yes. Yeah, so thank been... you for doing that. <laughs> so it's, you, know, it, you, you guys eat these cruciferous vegetables fairly frequently. Yes. yes. But here's the good news. Okay. You, can, you can take your gloves off. Okay. Pretty cool, isn't it? See the gland? Yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. And that's a normal gland. It's supposed to be a little meaty like that, not too large. You're not supposed to see the thyroid gland in a woman. But if you cook your veggies, steam them in particular is a great way of doing it. That oh. heat actually reduces that thyroid enlarging chemical. Oh. And so that's a very, very easy way to be able to get any kind of vegetable that you want. I know how much you both adore them. Mm -hmm. So just heat them up a little bit okay. to help you with that. Okay? okay? Sounds good. Let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about, yeah, by the way, I've got lots of recipes for cruciferous vegetables for the few people who are not following up <laughs> on Oz.com. Okay. Tasty ones, I hope. Nuts, yes. <laughs> I noticed peanuts were uh, uh, also on a lot of lists in the audience. And I love the taste, don't you? Oh, they're so good. Now, the thing about peanuts is when they're raw, and it's pretty common to have them, when they're raw, they actually also contain those thyroid enlarging chemicals. Oh. So the question is, what are you gonna replace it with? So peanut butter is something that you seem to like. A ton. So raw peanuts, which are legumes, they grow beneath the ground, yep. uh, can, can be a problem for the thyroid. So instead, uh, if you like making really great peanut butter that's made from raw nuts, You've either got to use roasted nuts instead oh. or mm. get a tree nut butter, which oh. doesn't have that same enlarging capacity. So either one will work. Which one would you prefer? I like to try the almond butter. I've never yeah. had it before. I like the almond butter. You do? Yes. yes I would about. prefer the peanut butter, but I'll try <laughs> the almond butter. The problem with peanut butter also is it's, uh, and the reason we didn't put it on our total 10 rapid weight loss plan is it's so addictive. You just can't yes. stop. Yeah. Whereas Almond butter, right guys? I mean, once you start, you can't stop. Whatever you're putting it on. We're, so but, but the almond butter, you actually, you'll stop yourself. It's not that alluring. And it's more mm -hmm. fulfilling, I feel. Yeah, it uh, is. Rather than the peanut butter, it gives you that anxiety of having more. I like right mixing away. them together, actually. Oh, All right. oh now, that's it. The, the last food I want to talk to you about is flax seeds. Flax seeds weren't on either of your lists. Yeah. I was surprised. <laughs> I actually use them, I ground them first, and then I use them, um, but it does change the flavor a little bit of the smoothie. It had like a fishy. It does taste it a little bit, yeah. So I just, I said, if I'm gonna be healthy, at least it has to taste a little better. So remember I mentioned the thyroid hormone has to suck in iodine from the blood? Yep. So the thyroid gland needs that iodine to work, and if you have raw flax seeds, it prevents it from being able to get that iodine. Oh. So again, it's good for you. I want you to have all these foods okay. today. A great source of omega-3s, but here, again, I want you to toast your flax seeds. Mm. Go ahead and taste this. This is toasted flax seed. You're going to like this. How would you eat this? Like, where would you, put on a salad? Or? Yeah, salad's the best. Okay. But you can put them in the smoothie as well. Mm -hmm. you, why don't you just describe the taste to everybody? Oh, sunflower seeds. Sunflower seeds. Nutty. Like it. Yeah. I like buttery, crunchy. Yeah, crunchy. Aren't it they does good? have the fishy <laughs> Oh, please. <laughs> See, I don't taste the fish. It oh, that's does. so much better. Yeah, yeah. You eat them just so like that. It is much better. And the better. other thing with the regular flax seeds get stuck in your teeth, it's the yeah. worst. Patients will comment on it. <laughs> so it only takes about five minutes. You can roast them yourselves. You can buy them roasted mm -hmm. as well. But if you're going to roast them, put them in, the, you know, in, a, in a little pan, in a, uh, one of those little uh, cooking pans. Mm -hmm. Put them in the oven for five minutes and you're done. Probably okay. no butter. No butter. <laughs> you got to go back to your seats. Thank you very Thank much. You. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> Coming up next, do you overeat when you're not even hungry? Do you wait until you're alone or when you're depressed? Then feel guilty or ashamed. Learn the tools to control emotional eating and stop the urge to binge. Coming up next. This is a food binge. These photos are taken of Kim. She's bravely agreed to share them with us. Notice how she still has her coat on in this picture. She actually started eating her cake the second she got home. And here she is sneaking in some chips when no one's watching. She had a computer in this image, and she's got the candy right there, ready to go. 
and she's eating ice cream, but she's doing it in bed. And Kim's joining us today. So Kim, what normally triggers these binges? And thank you, by the way, for sharing those pictures. Hi, Dr. Oz, nice to see you. Um, usually when I come home from a full day out, the kids are coming back from school, it's time to get ready to cook dinner, I just grab whatever's closest, chips and guacamole, salsa, things that are just easy, mindless. You feel powerless. I have to comment on the fact your jacket was still on. Well, that, I, I can't believe that picture was caught. Um, <laughs> I, yes, I, I walked in and it was typically 4.30 and I was like, oh, cake, great, eat it. <laughs> I want it. Don't think about the consequences that I have issues that I shouldn't be eating that. Well, you're not alone, as you know. There are lots of folks who feel just like you. Okay. I've got help today. Uh, there are more than 5 million women, we estimate, who binge eat. The question is, are you one of them? So I want you to answer these questions. Simple little quiz. Do it right now with me. First off, do you overeat even when you're not hungry? Second key question, do you wait until you're alone to eat? And the final question, do you feel depressed, guilty, or disgusted after eating? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you may have experienced a food binge. But today, the plan to stop a food binge when you feel the urge. Dr. Romani Duvrasula is joining us, an expert in the area. So Dr. Romani, why is food binging such a problem for so many women? It's a problem because here we are at the beginning of the year, everyone trying to lose weight. What do people do? They try to deprive themselves, right? They don't eat often. They think they're being good when they don't eat. And they don't eat the foods that they enjoy. They cut out everything they enjoy thinking that they're bad foods. They feel deprived and they binge. But more importantly, binge eating is an emotional game. So people feel bad in some way. And what do they do? You're stressed, you're bored, you're exhausted you reach for the food, and then the emotion becomes a trigger to binge. You combine that with fe feeling deprived, forget about it, you're probably going to binge. So, Dr. Romani has the tools to empower women to control this emotional eating. The first step is HALT, the acronym HALT, H-A-L-T. So what does it stand for, why is it so critical? Okay, think about it, HALT, stop. And what I want people to do is to HALT and think this, HALT, H, hungry, A for angry, L for lonely, and T for tired. Let's start at the top with hungry. If you're hungry, eat something. Eat a healthy snack, that's easy. Where it gets tricky is when you're having strong feelings like anger or loneliness or you're just tired. At those times, you'll often go for food not because you're hungry and that's when you're set up to make bad choices. For example, when we're bored, we go to the food as a way to numb our emotions. Say halt, stop, think, and don't go for it. That's a great way to prevent a binge. Interestingly, you want people to eat more. Yeah. Women to eat more, that's very yeah. counterintuitive. Yes, when we're talking about binging, why would you say eat more? Let's go back to what I said. People are depriving themselves. They're not eating enough, or they think, I'm having a good day, I haven't eaten at all. So then they hit that wall, and they're so hungry, so they lose control. A great example is, you're feeling hungry, you just need to eat an ounce of nuts, and honestly, in about 20 minutes, no long, you'll no longer be hungry. And then, if you're face down with a meal, you're less likely to feel deprived and go in for the binge. Eat regularly. It's absolutely essential so you don't get that hunger feeling. And you obviously don't want to continually tempt yourself. Yes. But how do you remove those temptations? Yes, well, to resist temptation, you have to remove temptation. And an even greater trick that I use with my clients is we keep the cookie jar. And what we do is we take the cookies out and I suggest that clients then take a bunch of little pieces of paper and write things they enjoy on them. Uh, take a walk, take a bath, read a book, do a crossword, create a bunch of those, stick them in your cookie jar. And then when you wanna feel bingy or you wanna feel like you need, you need that kind of binge fix, emotional fix, go to the kitchen and go ahead and stick your hand in that cookie jar. But this time, pull out something that gives you pleasure, that'll distract you, that'll help you address the emotion, and it'll probably get you back on track so you don't need to binge. Such an easy fix and it works like a charm. All right, let's go back to Kim for a second. So Kim, you've heard some of these ideas. I, I just want some honest feedback for you. Does it make sense? What parts of this are easiest to apply to your life? The halt. The halt? I'll, I'll apply the halt and think of that first before I go to reach for whatever it is that's sitting out on the counter and not thinking about it before I grab it. Who else here is willing to try this plan? Let me see a show of hands. And then who thinks it might be hard to cope or that might be hard to work for you? Let me start over here. Go ahead. Well, it's hard for me because I have three little kids at home. 
So those goodies are in the house all the time, cookies, yeah. chips. And when they go to bed, it's hard to resist it sometimes. So, you know, with having children, how do you, how do, you do that? That's a great question because let's face it, the people you live with are going to get real mad if you start throwing away their potato chips and their cookies. Trust me, there's going to be a mutiny. Make them hard to get to. I honestly keep my junk food so high up that I have to be a circus act to get them down. That gives you enough of a moment to stop yourself and say, come on, you don't need these chips. But it's really about creating barriers. That's, that's what works best. I saw your hand was up, but go ahead. What was your question? Hi, my name is Evelina. My question is, I just can't stop eating snack foods late at night. I be on the computer, I drink wine a lot also. And I just, I just have to, I mean, I have to have chips and guacamole, like she said. I'm, I'm just going to eat. I hear you, and I think you and I may be living in the same house, so I get it, okay? Um, number one, I think you like the routine of snacking in front of the TV. That's your routine. Health up that routine, and also try to portion control it a bit more, because the harder it is, like I say, never put the whole bag of chips in front of you when you're watching TV or your history. So that's what you want to do, is you want to keep a small bit in front of you, and I think you can do it put a little less a week at a time before you know it, you'll be all about the carrots on the TV instead of the chips. Right. Hello, um, I would like to know, I got kind of bingy on the go, so I'm mm. by myself and yeah. I carry snacks, you can call me 7-Eleven, I carry them with me and, you know, I just want to know, like, what do you recommend Can I see for your that? purse for one second? Yeah. Let's, just, let's, just go here. let's just, just out of, oh my goodness, we got to hear, hold Dr. those, don't, don't eat don't them, laugh. don't eat them. All right. Take it away. Okay, <laughs> step one, you're getting a smaller purse, okay? That, what is this? This is left over from Christmas, I think. <laughs> oh yeah, no, not good. Let's, let's make a deal. I take off my tree every day. I take Who has a candy tree. cane in their purse? Oh my goodness, look at this. <laughs> yeah, no, um, okay, purses and cars are huge danger zones for binging because they often contribute to mindless eating. You had talked about, Kim, mindless eating. They really do because you're often doing it on the go, in the train, in the car. And so, again, I mean it in all seriousness, a smaller purse, number one. Number two, start sticking some apples, carrots, um, whole grain crackers, that kind of stuff, nuts in your purse, you're going to be far better off because then, honestly, you're going to start getting bored and your purse is going to start to feel a lot less interesting. I'm giving you, you a present of some nuts from my bag. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> Coming up next, he's one of the biggest voices in America. Radio personality Elvis Duran steps out from behind the mic. The decision that helped end his weight loss struggle and how gastric surgery changed his life. Coming up next. Secrets to shrink your belly. Reveal. You can have one serving of these foods. Whether you have a pooch, muffin, bloated belly, or all three, Dr. Oz shows you what to eat for a tighter tummy. And I'm going to give you one very specific tip. That's coming up tomorrow. He's one of the most famous voices in America. But now Elvis Duran is stepping out from behind the microphone. Today, the decision that helped end his lifetime struggle with weight. Elvis Duran, one of America's best known radio DJs, has been at it since he was just 15 years old. Get in touch with us now, go to ElvisDuran.com. His claim to fame, Elvis Duran and the Morning Show is the nation's number one top 40 show. But Elvis has not had the same success controlling his weight. A few years ago, I visited Elvis in his studio and shocked him with the life-threatening reality of his blood pressure numbers. Elvis, your real blood pressure was 165 over 110. So catastrophically high that you have a chance of having a stroke today. <gasps> and later in our own studio, Elvis admitted that the severity of his health crisis had finally sunk in. He said, Shh, between you and me, you're walking death right now. This past year, Elvis, realizing it was time to make a major change, underwent gastric sleeve surgery. The procedure involves cutting out more than 85% of the stomach. It restricts the amount of food that can be eaten so patients feel less hungry less often. Now, back on the air, Elvis's weight is coming off, 
and he's on a mission, encouraging his loyal listeners to follow his lead and get healthier too. Please welcome my good friend Elvis is in the house. Elvis Duran. The sofa's over here. I can stay over there. You scare me. <laughs> I, got, I love you. I really wow. do adore you. You look fabulous. Well, I'm on my way. It's <laughs> yeah. the beginning, you know? I just started. I'm only three weeks since the surgery. I've lost about 28 pounds. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the decision. Because there are a lot of folks uh, who struggle with weight and aren't sure where this might play a role in their lives. Uh, you struggled with weight, you've tried diets, exercise, but, you know, throughout your entire life, you've yeah. not been able to get where you wanted to be. What was it that catalyzed you to move now? You know, Dr. Oz, I, I turned 50 years old this past year, and uh, I was like, you know, what, what am I doing? What's the rest of my life all about? I recently lost both parents, mm -hmm. and uh, they did not pass away quickly. You know, they, they took their time passing away, and I firmly believe that because of health choices, especially my father made earlier in life, he was paying the price now. I don't want to do that. I love life. I love this world of ours. I love people. I want to be around forever. I want to live to be 300,000 years old. <laughs> and it's just, I wanted to wear cool clothes. I want to, I want to be able to not start breathing heavily walking up a staircase. It's I want to, I want to, I want to, but I never ever did anything you know, far enough to make it happen. Now I did. I hope, hopefully I did, we'll see. There, there are a lot of folks, millions of people, who are struggling with the exact same decision that you made, and yet a lot of folks think it's a cop-out. <laughs> no, no. Uh, you'll explain the surgery in a second, I guess, right? It's not a cop-out. First of all, it's hospitals, it's needles, it's blood, it's, it's all that. Plus, you know, I have to relearn how to eat. You know what scared me the most, and I almost called Dr. Bessler, who you turned me on to for the procedure, and said, so I can't do it because this is my stomach. This is, this is an organ I was born with. I've fed it. Everything I chewed and enjoyed <laughs> went to my stomach. And it, it was my buddy. We ate chicken parm together. We drank <laughs> bottles of wine together. And it was, I was about to permanently remove a large portion of this organ out of my body. So it started messing with my head. And I'm so glad I did it, though. You know, I'm relearning how to eat now, but it's, it's tough. It's not a cop out. That it is not. Let's show everybody what we're talking oh, about. Oh, here we go. Here, here we go. go. Come All on right. over, my friend. So, uh, and I think it's important to understand because, you know, when you realize how important an operation this oh, is. Oh, look at that cheeseburger. Now, I wanted to make it look, I wanted to make it look like, we'll talk about binging in a minute. Well, thanks. <laughs> but but I, uh, this is, you're much more handsome, of course. Well, thanks. You avatar. are too. <laughs> so, here's what happens inside your stomach normally when you eat. So, you take that cheeseburger down. Look at that. And there's the liver over here. Get rid of that. Here's your stomach. And notice when the oh. acid meets the food. It digests it, so you can squeeze and liquefy a lot of food in there. You begin to swell the stomach up ponderously large. It gets it's so like, big. It's like a friggin' blimp. <laughs> blimp. All right. So the question is, how do you stop that? And of course, the brain's supposed to, but if you take a knife and cut off enough stomach to leave just a little banana bit behind, if you tried to squeeze that much food in there, that pouch, because it's so small now, won't let you. So it oh, sends, look, there, I'm, I'm, oh, oh, I look good there. You look good. You're very svelte. You can waltz down like this backwards, which is, again, you mentioned looking good in clothes, you know, being able to do the things you want to do. So right. I focus on the health, but you're appropriately mentioning the way you feel about life. So you can live to 300,000 years. Right. And with this you know, approach, you lose that weight. A lot of people who are battling with their weight and the way they look, it, it's an internal I don't like myself thing after a while, which I didn't have a problem with. I still don't. I love me. I, I'm fine with me. <laughs> but I would love... Me, if I could wear some cool clothes and not, you know, breathe yeah. like a whatever, trying to walk down the block. So most people can lose up to about 60% of their excess weight with this operation. Right. Um, but it does come with some potential changes to your lifestyle. A lot. Can you please elucidate? I, you you got to relearn how to eat. Uh, you know, now if I sit down to eat a meal, I, I have four or five bites and I'm, I'm done. I'm full. But at the same time, I need to eat well. So it's up to me to make the right decisions. It's a tool. It's not a permanent change. I, I've got to make the decision to make it permanent and continue like this. So for the many who are considering what you had done, an operation that, that is a crutch to help them along their path, a tool, yeah. what advice would you give them? First of all, uh, you've got to talk to your doctor about it. Which, And you, by the way, Dr. Oz led me through this. He led me to Dr. Bessler, which was fantastic, who was my surgeon and his team were great. But you know what? Talking to other people who've done it, 
see what they went through and what they're going through and what their struggles are. Uh, very important. Part of the reason I adore you, and so many people adore you, is that you're- Are you about to ask me to marry you? Yes, please, <laughs> Elvis, if you don't mind. Ah, I can't get it off. It won't come off. Yeah, I know. It's a part of marriage. It won't come off. <laughs> well, when we but it's a good thing. When we announced it, it, I'm very proud. The best decision I ever made was getting married to Lisa, the brains of the operation. Uh, the, uh, that's true. We, I love Lisa. Also, yeah. uh, there are so many people who admire you and respect you, and because you're so authentically you, this is who you are when we're not on the stage, uh, they trust you, and they have strong feelings for you. So I have one of those women here. We actually asked her to come. We had so many people who could have come. Who's here? Uh, Kathy, one of your biggest fans. Come over, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Come here. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see oh, you. It's so nice meeting you. Come over and have a seat with us. <laughs> I, I, was, I want you next to me. Kathy wanted to sit over there because right. she's going to look at both of us. And she has a little letter she wrote. By the way, I honest to goodness, I, there were, I mean, so many of these. We could have filled hours of programming. But we elected Kathy because I think her story spoke for so many others. All right, take it away. Dear Elvis, I have been overweight for as long as I can remember. I'm tired of getting out of breath from briskly walking, tired of not fitting into roller coasters, and tired of not being able to start a family with my husband. It's great. Keep going, I'm dying to hear the rest of it. <laughs> this weight has held me back for the last time. You have been such an inspiration to me. I'm proud to say that because of you, I am finally taking the steps to take control of my own health. And I thank you for being so brave to share your story to help make my decision. You have changed my life. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> here. You know, uh, you're just Phoenix. You, it's so easy to say that I've changed your life, but it's, it's you. You change your life. It's all you. You love yourself. You want to do something for you. All gifts should start with yourself. And there's nothing wrong with being a little selfish about doing things for you. Here. Thank you. Seriously. You, you're doing this for you. And you're changing your life. And I'm, I'm glad that you're giving me that little bit of credit. I'm glad you listen. We need all the listeners we can get. Yeah. I bless you both. Thank you very much for being public. We'll be right back, everybody. Once you've brewed your morning cup of gel, perk things up around the house with this versatile leftover. From cosmetic fixes to cleaning up the kitchen, before you throw them out, find out the many surprising uses for coffee grounds. Next. We are bringing healthy back this season. I want you to bring it too. Grab your prescription pad for fun and sign up for free tickets today. You can go to DrOz.com slash tickets and sign up. Did I get it right? <laughs> One of my favorite segments, new healthy uses for everyday things. Now, while most people toss these out after making their morning pick-me-up, you guys have found some pretty great uses for used coffee grounds. So let's get to them. There's a bunch of them. I'm going to start with this one over here. Take a look at how you use coffee grounds to kill odors. Hi, Dr. Oz. What I like to do with my leftover coffee grounds is place them in a small bowl like this. Place the bowl in the center of my refrigerator. This eliminates all odors of my refrigerator. I like to use my coffee grounds in a sock as an air freshener and to eliminate odors. First, you'll need an old sock, but a clean sock, an empty glass, and a glass with about a handful of ground coffee. And there you have a coffee scented air freshener and your house is gonna smell so good. When I use my coffee grinds in the trash can to eliminate odors. It's that easy. You gotta love those ideas. Dawn is here in studio. She uses coffee grinds to kill odors left on her hands when she cooks the potent foods like the garlic that you're cutting up here. Mm -hmm. So, okay, maybe let me split your hands for a second. Yeah. What do you think? As predicted. Okay, now show me the little <laughs> trick that you do to get that odor out. Well, I like to get the odor out with coffee grounds because I, there was a time when I never cooked at all, so I never had to worry about any smells on my hands. But now I cook all the time, lost weight, so Good I just you. grab this stuff up. And I use it just like washing your hands with soap. So I'll just come over. Should I come around this way or just yeah, come? Should be easier for you to stay. That's good. Okay, all right. And I just rub it in. And it's just like using soap. Make sure I get it in everywhere. 
And why does it work, you think? I wish I knew. I actually heard about it from a friend. <laughs> and the first time they told me about it, they said, you should wash your hands with coffee. So I said, okay, no problem. And I had some 7-Eleven coffee with French vanilla. Wash and I off. thought the leftover <laughs> was going to do it. It didn't do it. <laughs> right. when they... like, here's the thing. It's like baking soda. I think it absorbs the order. But let me just see if it works. Oh, okay. I've All never right. actually seen anyone do this before. Okay. You know, it smells like coffee and garlic. It, no, no, I'm kidding. It does not. <laughs> Let them smell it a little bit. You guys okay. audit it. What do you think? What do you think? Does it smell like someone put garlic in your coffee or does it smell good? It smells good. Yeah, you don't smell the garlic at all. Okay. What do you think? Oh, it smells really good. You want to smell it too? <laughs> it smells good. All right, keep, good. keep going up the audience. All right. That's a wonderful <laughs> tip. Thank you. All right, let's get to the next use for coffee grounds. Which actually help you clean dirt, dirty pots and pans. Dana says her mother taught her to use leftover coffee grounds to scrub caked on dirt or food from the pots and pans and plates and cooking services, all these things. You must do a lot of cooking in your house. Well, actually, my favorite thing to make for dinner is actually reservations. Oh. But if I have to cook, um, cleaning with the coffee grounds has really helped. So again, you're not taking the fresh stuff, you're using the used coffee grounds. And show me how it works. Here's sure. A I'm going to take a soft cloth and wet it up. I'm going to grab some coffee grounds um, right from the filter, because I've used them in the morning and I have to clean the filter anyway. anyway right? My friend Ian says the K-cup is the perfect amount okay. in there. So I put that in, I use a little, you know, I'll have the water running in a, in a normal world. And I just use this to scour the pan. It's, it's not abrasive, it's natural, and it takes it right off, if we, you can see. We already established that it will help your hands smell good afterwards. Yes, and actually one of the good things is I can use it as a nat natural exfoliant, too. I love this. And would you like to have, uh, feel how soft my hands are? It smells good. It I'm sorry, good. I'm already married, though. <laughs> That's right. I, I, noticed, you are too. I noticed the ring, yes. <laughs> <laughs> very married. Yeah, Thank you very you. much. All right, let's get one more, one more. Think about this. Use coffee grounds. To reduce the appearance of cellulite. Is it possible it could work? There are creams that have caffeine and stuff, but could use coffee grounds, get you there as well. Kate has bravely agreed to show us how this works. How are you, Kate? Good, so you? It's hard to believe you have cellulite, but you actually share some images with us. Are these your pictures? Yes, All they're right. very hard to share. Right. But... So this is what Kate's legs look like before, which I appreciate you sharing. But this is what happens when you put coffee grounds, which you're gonna show us, on your cellulite, which is, uh, I mean, incredible. That's a big difference. That's a big difference. He shows how to do this. I mean, this is pretty cool. It's actually really easy. I make coffee every day, so I always have this in my house ready to go. You just take some used coffee grounds and then add a little bit of fresh coffee grounds. And peppermint oil, is that important? Peppermint oil, yeah. The peppermint oil helps prepare your skin. Just add a couple drops of peppermint oil, and it smells good, too. It still smells like coffee to me. Then you mix it together? You mix it together, just add a little bit of fresh coffee um, left over from the water, and then you mix it into a paste. Right. And then after you have the paste, you just take it and then you... Here, do it to me. I'll, 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 I have cellulite on my hands. <laughs> well, it actually works. Even if you don't have cellulite, it helps improve the skin texture. So if your skin is dull or anything like that, you can use this as well. And then what I do is I take the plastic wrap and... I wrap this, I wrap the skin in it. I mean. And how often do you do this? Um, you can do it however many times you like. I, I like to do it whenever I need that extra boost of confidence. And how long does it last for? <laughs> um, it depends on like how much you exercise, how much you, how much water you drink and everything like that. But I'd say like one or two days. Um, and the, the coffee and the peppermint oil, if you let it on your skin, it absorbs into the, it absorbs into the skin and the saran wrap helps keep the moisture in. And then if you leave it on for a couple of hours, the skin tends to heal. It's almost similar to putting like lotion on your hands and then a plastic glove and letting it on for, for quite a while because the skin will heal. You know, I love having people on the show who actually are doing these things. So you know all the stuff, <laughs> all the subtleties of how it works and what is supposed to happen. Thank you for the tip. I appreciate You're it. Welcome. And it can't beat the price. For more uses of coffee grounds and other odd things, you can go to DrOz.com. We'll be right back. to shrink your belly reveal you can have one serving of these foods whether you have a pooch muffin bloated belly or all three dr oz shows you what to eat for a tighter tummy and i'm gonna give you one very specific tip 
Plus. Can't sleep through the night? The number one reason you're getting up and what to do about it. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. Secrets to shrink your belly. Reveal. You can have one serving of these foods. Whether you have a pooch, muffin, bloated belly, or all three, Dr. Oz shows you what to eat for a tighter tummy. And I'm going to give you one very specific tip. Plus, can't sleep through the night? The number one reason you're getting up and what to do about it. All new Oz. That's coming up tomorrow. It's that time of year again. Our fate is in the hands of a furry little rodent and his shadow. Happy Groundhog Day for everybody. The truth is all Puxatani Phil isn't all that accurate. However, your shadow happens to be a pretty good health predictor. It's incredibly simple to use it. Here's the shadow rule. If your shadow is shorter than you are, you're more likely to get a sunburn than if your shadow is taller than you. Now, of course, like Phil, you've got to actually pop your head out of your winter cave to check it out, but try it out, it actually will work for you. Now it's time for In Case You Missed It. First up, everybody's always talking about how to get gluten out of your diet, but I've got some new tips for how to get it back into your diet. You're gonna prepare your gut by eating two servings of fermented foods a day to build up the good bacteria in your intestine. This will give you the ability to digest and process the gluten when you do add it back in. And there's lots of examples, pickles and kimchi and sauerkraut and the misos, yogurt, of course. Uh, all these can work for you and easy to include every day in your diet. Next, wonderful advice from one of the most famous voices on American radio, Elvis Duran. Elvis just had life-changing weight loss surgery and in, you know what, he's gone from looking like this, as much as I adore him, he was not happy with that, to this, which you see on the right there. He's already lost 28 pounds in just three weeks. Elvis's number one tip is to talk to someone who's had the procedure. It's invaluable to get their perspective on what what it takes to have the operation, to recover from it, and finally to achieve your goals. And lastly, you know I love finding new uses for everyday things, and I've got a great use for leftover coffee grounds. You gotta clean the bit anyway, so use it this way. They're a terrific way to get rid of that garlic smell on your hands. So you're cooking the garlic, and you're shopping through it, and your hands don't smell so good. So just rub the grounds, take a little bit of grounds, and rub it in your hands like you would soap in water. Turn the water on, wash your hands, and I tell you, it was remarkable. Even our audience was impressed. Every one of them went to smell our guest's hands to prove that in fact, our hands smelled fantastically well. And it does not smell like you put garlic in your coffee. It just smells good. Finally, be careful of dubious people online that make it seem like I'm endorsing their products because I don't. To see a full list of our trusted sponsorship partners, you can go to DrOz.com and I'll see you next time. Woo!